Hi viewers, welcome back. So in the last video, we have seen few interview questions related to access risk analysis of SAP GRC. Continuation to that, we will see few more interview questions related to IR module. Disclaimer, it is not that every interviewer will ask the same questions and will not expect the same answers for the questions too. The video is only for the knowledge sharing purpose. So regarding the risk analysis, the interviewer may ask a question, can you elaborate on different types of risk analysis available in SAP GRC RD? So we can do risk analysis at user level or role level or profile level or HR object level, etc. So what is this user level risk analysis? So user level risk analysis is the one where uh, the GRC system will read all the roles assigned to the users and it will compare against the rule set and identifies any risk exist with that user or not so it will point out like if a user is having two roles one is giving the create vendor and other one is creating access to the payment of vendor then it will pop up a risk that the user is having the risk now when come to the role level the role level is First, initially, we need to synchronize this authorization sync for the role. Once authorization sync is done for that particular role, so all the authorizations of the role are synced to GRC. So when you run the role level risk analysis against this role, what system will do? The system will read all the authorizations, the transaction codes, which are there in that particular role, and it will compare against the rules in the rule set and identifies if this role itself is having any SOD risk or any critical action or critical permission risk so if the role itself is giving access to the t codes for creating vendor and payment vendor then the role itself is having a sod risk and if suppose this role is having a critical transaction code then this comes under the critical action risk if the role is having a critical permission that is an authorization then the role itself is having critical permission risk so the this can be done by using the role level risk analysis it is recommended that the role should be clean and should not have any SOD conflicts because if the role itself is having any SOD conflict, whenever we assign this role to any of the user, the user also gets the SOD conflict. That is the reason it is recommended that roles should be clean without any SOD conflicts and without any CA or CP risks. Sometimes interviewer also ask, I am modifying an existing role. I want to check whether it is causing a risk or not before proceeding with the modifications. How can I accomplish it? We can accomplish it by using role level simulation. We have an option called role level simulation in WBC. So we can do that by adding the extra T codes what we want to add in the role or deleting the existing T codes or adding new authorizations or deleting existing authorizations. So we can give that all the details and we can do simulate based on that it will compare with the rule set results and it will give us whether this additions or deletions to the existing role may cause the risk or may not cause the risk in case if it is causing the risk we can do further more modification if it is not causing the risk we can go ahead and do the role modifications and proceed with our changes can you elaborate something on different types of reports available after doing risk analysis after doing this risk analysis either user level or low level so we will get the report we can have in different format maybe detailed report or summary report management summary or executive summary so detailed report is the one which is includes each and every detail like the user the risk and in this risk what all the function and in this function which t code is causing the risk and this t code is coming from which role assigned to the user so every information will be there in the detailed report and if i want to see whether this transaction code is executed by the user how many times then summary report will give you the information on that and an overview if i just want to see what are the risks we can go for either management level or executive report so just it will give you the users and the risks and if any mitigations applied or not one of the user is having the risk and the user want your help to identify the role which is causing the risk and the transaction code uh, on the 
authorization which is causing the conflict and whether that transaction is being used by that user in the past few days so in this case what we will do we will run the risk analysis for the particular user we will download the detailed report and we will find out the role we need to do analysis so we need to find out the roles in the different functions and then we will find out the transaction codes in that which is causing the risk and then, then we will also in the summary report we can see uh, how many times this transaction is executed so detailed report is mostly used for analyzing this risk so that we will get clear picture of what role assigned to the user is causing the risk or not and to remediate what can be done but here there we face one challenge here is that yes detail report is useful for multiple purposes but when you are running this risk analysis for huge volume of data that is for many users who are having a lot of risk the data volume is very huge therefore uh, detailed report loading also might not happen as well as even after loading when you try to download also it will throw you an error because the data is huge so it is always recommended to run that in the smaller chunks so that we can easily download this detailed report in case we are not able to download from nwbc we can download from the backend jrac spool download we can give this job and we can get it done what is batch risk analysis batch risk analysis is the alternate name for offline risk analysis when we want to do risk analysis for huge volume of data in the connector system we generally go with batch risk analysis so this will gather the data from the connector system and will run the risk analysis against our rule set before doing this batch risk analysis we need to run two jobs synchronization jobs the first one is repository object sync to sync all the users along with their assigned roles and profiles to this grc as well as we also will run the authorization sync job to sync their roles authorizations from the connector system to grc once these two synchronization jobs are successful we will schedule batch risk analysis via spro it triggers a background job and on completion the reports will be generated where these reports can be analyzed then what is meant by online risk analysis and what is the difference between offline and online risk analysis online risk analysis is nothing but we are running risk analysis against the user or role directly by connecting to the connector system fetching the data so via nwbc user risk analysis or a role level risk analysis so at that particular moment grc will connect to the particular connector system will read the roles assigned to the users and the authorizations and it will compare against the rules and give you the uh, details so when the data is huge sometimes you will get some error or if the connector system unable to connect then also it will give us an error offline is nothing but when we run this batch risk analysis job the data is stored in grc and we can just run the risk analysis from that offline data so that is offline risk analysis either of them has advantages as well as disadvantages which need to be choosed depend on our requirement i have multiple role sets in my system global as well as a custom so when i'm raising the access request i want to choose one default role set so that the risk analysis can then automatically on submission of the request how can i do that it is possible we can have the parameter 1021 then we can specify the default rule set what need to be done while you are raising the access request so that rule set by default will be picked up and uh, risk as uh, analysis is done comparing that rules in that rule set now here the new question may also come suppose I have a requirement if I raise an access request for one company code role set one need to be selected as default and if I raise an access request for the user for a company code two it should select the one more role set named role set two by default so the system should automatically select this based on the company code in which the user is there and we don't want to select it manually can we accomplish it yes we can also accomplish it but here we require some brf plus rules to be created so we need to create some attribute for this company code based on that company code we need to write some brf plus flat rule and that whatever the rule whatever we have created that we need to configure in the uh, spro parameters then we can accomplish this task 
have created a custom transaction code and assigned some authorizations is that we need to include in the rule set or not it is a decision of the business whether to include the custom transactions into the rule set or not if the business feels that that custom transaction is having any critical changes access it is recommended to add it to the rule set if it is only a reporting transaction or a display transaction so it may not have any effect so we can avoid adding it to the rule set but it is recommended that every custom transaction whichever giving create or edit access to be added to the rule set extending to the previous question sometimes whenever a new custom transaction need to be added to a rule the functional team may approach us and ask whether this custom transaction is already a part of rule set or not how can we check it so we can check this by using a table called grac act rule so this table will give you the list of uh, actions which are part of our rule set so there if you can give this custom transaction and against the connector and if you execute so it will show whether it is already a part of it or not can i know the tables related to grac ara module there are many tables uh, when we create the risk so we know that when we upload or download there are 10 files so all of these 10 files have the 10 tables behind one for business process and we have grsa function grsa function act function per grsa svod risk and grsa risk description and we have a risk owner so we have all the 10 tables for it and along with that there are two important tables grsc act rule grsc perm rule grsc act rule is a table where it stores the transactions or the fury apps uh, there is nothing but the actions which are part of our rules in the rule set similarly grcp rm rule is nothing but it stores all the permissions which are part of our rules in the rule set and for the sake of analysis we are having grac user act vl grac role act vl grac user prm vl grac role prm vl so these tables will store the sod violations which are related to the user as well as the role so these are all the few important questions which mostly interviewer ask regarding access risk analysis when we have a risk what need to be done so either we need to either mitigate or we need to remediate so the next concept is remediation and mitigation of the risk which is offered by grc in the next video we will try to see few more questions related to uh, risk mitigation and remediation thank you